Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to look at the first part of our published accounts which is called the income statement. Hey, now before we get any further I want to take you back to the very first class that we had together, the very first video that we had together. And in that video we established what a business is all about and what business is all about is the first it identifies what customers want, it acquires resources, it puts it through some sort of a production process, converts it into a product, or a good or a service, and then eventually sells it for a profit. Profit. Okay, that's the game. That's the end game. That's what all businesses on entrepreneurs are looking for, that we want to be a profitable business. And it would be a good idea to figure out whether you are being a profitable business or not, or project whether you are going to be a profitable business or not in the near future. So we're going to have to focus on profit a little bit before we fully understand what an income statement is. Okay. Now, there is one formula that I keep coming that keeps coming up again and again in our videos, and that is the most basic equation or the most basic formula for calculating profit, which is your total revenue minus your total cost. Right? Very simple. What is your revenue? Price times quantity, whatever you sold and how much you sold it for, minus what it cost you to make it. And that will tell you whether you make a profit or a loss. Now, an income statement is nothing but just an another way of showing this formula. It's just a little bit expanded, a few more entries go in there, but in the end, all that an income statement is showing that how much did you earn in terms of your revenue and what did it cost you to make the products that you sold, hoping to make a profit. So when I break down our income statement, you will see that this whole formula just forms itself within a statement called the income statement. So a typical income statement would look like this. First of all, it's made for a particular time period as we discussed earlier, so for a six month period, for a year, or however long a company wants to see its profitability. And it will always start as a formula starting with the revenue of the company, which is how much are they earning from their sales. And that is the starting point in our example of the income statement in this question or in this example we have it at three thousand and sixty dollars is what the company's earned in its revenue so I'm just gonna check that off right here because that's half of my profit formula done now I want to figure out what did it cost me to make this now we know so far that there are two costs or two types of costs you have your direct costs costs that can be directly attributed to a product and then you have your indirect costs, which are your overall costs, your fixed costs, which things included things such as rent and your wages. So once your revenue is figured out, the next step is deducting the direct cost of production. Okay, now the direct costs also closely related to your variable costs, things such as raw material or your direct labor, for example. So if I'm making tables, if I make more tables, I need more labor. So that's obviously I have to pay for those pieces of wood to make the table. And that's going to cost me. That increases my variable cost. And within the income statement, the direct cost or the variable cost are given the term cost of sales. Okay, so that's the fir that's the second entry on my income statement, and that's the first thing that I deduct from my revenue. Okay, of course costs are deducted from your revenue, and I'm gonna do the same here within the statement. So I minus my cost of sales, which are one thousand eight hundred and forty dollars. Okay, so that's half of my cost done, the direct cost of production. Once I deduct my revenue from my cost of sales, it leads me to my first profit checkpoint. Okay? And this checkpoint, this profit checkpoint is called your gross profit. Okay? Which is simply revenue minus cost of sales will give you your gross profit. 3060 minus 1840 gives me $1,220 my gross profit. Okay? Now what is gross profit? Gross profit is that amount of revenue that's left after you've paid for your direct cost of production, right? For example, raw, raw material and labor, once you've paid them off, you've still got $1,220 of revenue remaining. You begin with 3060, yeah, but now you've got 1220. This is, is sort of half profit right now because we've only paid half costs. The other half are my indirect costs or my fixed costs. 
and those obviously also have to be paid from the revenue that the company is making and those are given the term in our income statement of overheads or expenses okay these are your indirect costs it may include marketing expenses administrative costs rent salaries all those entries go in there in this example that amounts to 580 dollars again this is a cost therefore it is deducted from my gross profit and as soon as i deduct the second half of my cost with this the direct and the indirect or the variable or the fixed costs are taken care of and this then leads me to the second check second profit checkpoint within the income statement called the operating profit simply means that throughout the year of operations whatever you sold it cost you 1840 in direct and 580 in indirect costs and now you're left with $640, which started from a revenue of 3060. Okay, that is your operating profit. Now, this is not where it ends. Okay, once the operating profit has been calculated, then the business has to fulfill its obligations. Okay, you remember the word obligations, meaning things that they have to do. And what they have to do is they have to satisfy certain stakeholders. Certain payments have to be made from your profit so that these stakeholders stay happy with their commitment to the business. And the first of those stakeholders are your banks. Okay. Now, why would banks be interested in your profit? Because they would have given you a loan and they are interested in seeing if you can still pay the interest on the loan that you've taken. So that's the next entry on our income statement that you deduct the interest from your operating profit which in our example is of eighty dollars once you pay this off it leads you to the third profit checkpoint called profit before tax which is 560 right now obviously with the mention of tax it would <laughs> make sense that i'm going to refer to now a stakeholder called the government right the government are also interested in getting paid their taxes for the services that they are providing for the business and that is the next deduction from my profit before tax which in this case which generally given as a percentage and that amounts to 112 in our example once I deduct of course taxes are paid out of your profit so they will be deducted once you pay this off it leads me to my fourth profit checkpoint called profit after tax that's nice and convenient isn't it now there's one more stakeholder, arguably the most important stakeholder in this whole scenario, scenario who is interested in knowing what our profitability is like. And they are the shareholders or the owners. <coughs> they are the people who've given you finance when you needed it. They've taken equity for it. And of course, from the profit that you make, they're going to expect to be paid <coughs> in the form of dividends. In our example, that's 200. And once these obligations have been fulfilled, once the stakeholders of banks, governments, and shareholders have been paid off, then whatever is left in the business is what really the business's own possession. And that is called your retained earnings. This is the amount that you truly retained for the business for reinvestment. And you will remember from an earlier concept of internal growth. Internal growth is usually done by your own money, and that's what this retained earnings is. So in our whole example, although you sold an amount of 3060 in the end, what company was really able to save for reinvestment was 284 This is what a typical income statement would look like. So I just want to sum up the important takeaways from the income statement. First of all, your gross profit, the formula for it, it's simply revenue minus your cost of sales. So if you ever get a question on gross profit, this is what you remember. Your operating profit is gross profit minus your overheads. And finally, once you get to your operating profit, the operating profit is divided into these four categories in different proportions, of course. You pay the interest to the bank, then you pay the taxes to the government, then you pay the dividends to the shareholders. Whatever is left is retained in the business as retained profit. By the way, making an income statement is not an easy task. 
Okay, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort recording each transaction, calculating the cost, calculating the profit, finding the percentage for interest and the taxes and the dividends. It takes a lot of work to go through this whole thing. But there are clear advantages, clear uses for making such a statement. And the first benefit that you get from this is that you're able to compare yourself with your previous year's performance or with the performances of other firms or other public limited companies who have their income statements available for anyone to see, which includes the competitors. So in order to improve your performance, for managers to see where can we reduce our costs, where can we save our, uh, uh, where can we reduce the cost of sales, for example, reducing uh, the cost on raw materials, maybe finding a cheaper supplier, but you know that would come at the cost of reducing the quality of the product. So making those decisions becomes easier once you also know the financial side of it. What would it cost it with last year? What would it cost us next year? Where can we do the cost saving? So that comparison becomes easy having a look at two income statements. Secondly, every year a company will make a dummy st income statement which will be called a budgeted income statement. And that's where these budgeted levels are determined and of course at the end of the year when the year is passed the company will then make the actual and between those budgeted and the actual they can make comparison that how good was our planning did we m fulfill our uh, goals did we accomplish all the targets if not then go back to point number one how can we improve our performances so again good way to keep a nice check and balance on what your financial performance has been and of course, whenever you go ask for finance from a bank or an investor, they would want to see your profitability. And that's something that comes through an income statement. So the banks and investors will clearly ask for it before giving you any money. However, there are a couple of limitations of income statement that we should keep in mind. First of all, it's made at the end of the year or at the end of a period. And by that time, all the sales have been made all the costs have been incurred and all the percentages have been decided. So it's really a historical data of what happened in the previous period. And because it's historical, you cannot change anything about it. So maybe loading the price of your product may have increased your revenue, but you can't do that anymore because this is simply looking at what's happening in the past. Yes, you can make decisions for the future, but you cannot amend what's already seen in the income statement. And finally, different companies have different ways of preparing it. There are multiple methods, there are multiple standards of making accounts, such as income statement, and they're not entirely disclosed all the time that what methods were being used. So if you want to compare yourself with your competitors, it may not be possible because it just may be two different methods being used and they will always yield a very different result. So before comparing, make sure the standards or the methods that are being used behind the income statement are the same. That is your income statement. 